Welcome to Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Today, we're gonna to be talking about all the important, huge automobile news. So we'll be talking about Volkswagen coming out with the Scout. So is that gonna be a Bronco competitor? Is it gonna be more? Is it gonna be less? Well, we'll see where it really likely is gonna sum up against the Bronco. We'll also be talking about EV tax credits. So we're gonna be, this show is gonna be pretty electrical. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about the Tesla S Plaid being, well, tested out on Ford's racetrack. So very exciting news there because, because it signifies possibly huge changes at Ford. We'll also be talking about price increases, price protection. We'll be talking about F-150 allotments, what to expect if you've ordered an F-150 throughout the show. I'll be putting what's not scheduling this week just at the bottom because I don't want to take up too much time talking about that, but I'll just put what's not scheduling, meaning you don't need to check your and refresh your email and check in the system to see if you got that email to see if you got assigned a VIN in a potential build week. We'll be talking about Maverick problems, how they've been resol resolved. Uh, not a recall, but there is a major uh, Maverick hybrid problem that was stressing people out, those cats that were heating up. So we'll talk about that. We'll also be talking about a Mach-E, not quite a recall, but for clients that feel that, uh, and obviously some clients aren't getting enough heat on that windshield in the winter. So that's resolved. We'll be talking about how that got fixed. And if you've got pro trailer assist on an F-150, that has been really complicated. Do you need the stickers? Do you need the cabling? The cabling is $1,200 if you don't get it with your order. Huge issues there. So before going off and spending $1,200, figuring that's what you need to be able to use Pro Trailer Backup Assist, I will cover that up. And we'll be talking about Blue Cruise and the complications of getting that set up. So we've got a lot going on for this show. There'll also be a little bit of PSA, public service announcement for a couple of the Ford models. Let's just put the pedal to the metal, jump right in and get started. So let's start with the Volks news. Volkswagen, they, not Volks mag, sorry. Volkswagen is coming out with a Scout and it's gonna be its own brand. Now that's actually really interesting uh, if it actually, you know, comes to fruition because Ford talked about doing the same thing with the Bronco that, you know, the Bronco, they had talked about it getting its own dealerships and really for showrooms being a very distinct for, you know, dealers that do get to keep both Ford and Bronco, they're talking about things being very distinct for um, that those sections of the dealers and maybe even add on to dealerships. Well, we'll see what works out in future contracts in regards to negotiations between dealers and Ford, you know, what Ford is gonna be offering versus what they'll be expecting in regards to, you know, millions of dollars in, you know, upgrades, uh, upgrades for the actual, you know, building the dealers themselves. So there's talk of that, but we'll see what actually works out with the whole, you know, Bronco being sort of its own brand. But for the Scout, it looks like Volkswagen has made it pretty clear. It is from the get go going to be its own brand. So what are we going to get? Well, I think we're obviously not, I think we are guaranteed getting an SUV out of this and it's going to be electric an EV and possibly a truck. So we also thought we'd possibly get a truck from the Bronco, but so far there's no Gladiator competitor, which is just fine. Uh, I would have personally liked a Bronco truck. I'd love to see Volkswagen, or I should say Scout now. Volkswagen is used to having a lot of brands underneath uh, the Vol Volkswagen umbrella, but I think the Scout is going to be an amazing addition. I look forward to seeing Hopefully not just an SUV, but an electric truck. We can expect them to probably have retro styling because we can see Bronco has really proven that to be very popular and we'll see really how much of an off-roader it is. Really what worries me with off-roading EVs is if those batteries get punctured, you can run into 30 to $50,000 in repairs very quickly just because you punctured 
the battery. And often when you have movement and you start puncturing a battery, well, if you slide off the rock, you might actually just scrap the whole battery. So proper protection underneath these vehicles, if they're gonna be true off-roaders, is gonna be extremely important. However, I don't think they're gonna be true off-roaders. I think they're gonna be light off-roaders, making them not really competition for the Bronco. Now the Bronco, I highly, highly suspect that it's gonna be offered as a plug-in and even an electric and EV later on because Jim Farley has said that all the icons are getting electrified. I think step one will be the plug-in because well, that's pretty obviously already been stated uh, accidentally by Volkswagen that there's gonna be a Ranger plug-in. So likely off the 2.3 liter and that makes me wonder, the Mustang. Thought we'd get a new Mustang for 2023. Now they're unveiling it in 2023. Looks like it'll be a 2024 model running quite possibly off of the av uh, Aviator and Explorer platform, which the Aviator is plug-in. Is, has it been delayed one year because Ford wants to make sure that there is ample batteries and possibly new battery technology? So are we gonna be getting a plug-in Mustang or a full-out EV Mustang? I'd say I have a feeling we're gonna see a 2.3 liter plug-in Mustang, and I'd love to see that electric motor and battery being Power, powerful enough to be as fast or nearly as fast as a Tesla Model S Plaid or Plaid, however you want to pronounce it, because, because that's being tested at Ford. So if you recall, this vehicle has a zero to 60 mile per hour time of 1.99 seconds. So it's temporarily the fastest production vehicle on the market. So Ford doesn't just have vehicles, you know, tested and played around with for no reason, it's for benchmarking. So are we possibly gonna see a very fast Ford Thunderbird be a very fast electric vehicle or are we gonna see the current Mustang also offered as an electric vehicle? Don't be worried if you're a fan of the V8, uh, Ford has already confirmed that when the new Mustang comes along, the V8 option is still going to be there. And actually how they worded it is, it's still gonna be there even though the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, that's twin turbo six cylinder, is you know offers better performance than the v8 and i can definitely understand that it offers better performance in the f-150 and f-150 ecoboost has 500 pound feet of torque and 400 horsepower and what well that 500 pound feet of torque definitely does blow away what the v8 well blow away it's a bit better than what the v8's offering for torque about 80 pounds of torque um, more We'll see, we're gonna see, we have to wait, keep you all updated on that story. And of course the 3.5 liter EcoBoost is also what is in the Ford GT, obviously creating more power than what is offered in the F-150s. Will the Mustang ever go EcoBoost six cylinder? I think it's gonna be an eventuality, but I actually think we're gonna see plug-in first probably off a 2.3 liter format because they'll have already invested to have that for, you know, the Explorer, the Ranger, and yes, the Bronco. So uh, my dream vehicle is a plug-in Bronco so I can go to work every day on electric power. And when need be, I can do a long trip having both the engine and the motor working together. Now, I just want to point out, if you're looking at a Ford, really, if you're looking at any vehicle, right now prices are going up. Why are they going up? Well, inflation. So while the transit didn't go up very much over the last two years, it's getting one big hit, uh, $9,000 Canadian, rough, you know, depending on how you equip it in the model. So if, uh, if a Ford interests you, you probably want to get in and order one pretty darn soon. However, for 2022, so as of January of this year, at least regionally, when you order a 2022, what happens is that your price is protected and you gotta make sure you get a signed offer from your dealership that your price protected. But a dealership can only, and Ford will only price protect, uh, you know, if you've ordered a 2022 in 2022 and it arrives as a 2022 model year you can be price protected. But if it comes in as a 2023, well then you can get the first available 2023 price. So you also want that signed um, in writing when you, you know, when you order these vehicles. So you want, even if in 2023, let's say there's three or four price increases. And when your vehicles come in, let's say your 2023 model year vehicle has had three price increases. Well, the first one should, 
the first available price on most of these vehicles. 2023 pricing is going to be available around August and September. Well, that's the price you should expect to see. Now, I've got whole videos on price protection, so I would ask and encourage that you watch those um, because they are guaranteed to help you out. Now, F-150s. I've got to say that, you know, for production numbers coming up in July and August, it's not as depressing as it's been in some other months. And it's actually pretty decent at uh, regionally. I'm not too worried. So when Jim Farley said that by the end of 2022, the negative impacts of the microchips could very well, I don't have the direct quote, but how I understood what I read is that he was saying that, you know, um, there, there's good possibility that by the end of this year, 2022, will be out of the, you know, the woods, we could say, for microchips. And they won't be affecting production like they have been. And already I can see that for upcoming months, production on the F-150s aren't that bad. Uh, Super Duties, well, if you order an F-150 these days, the order, the weight compared to a lot of manufacturers, for a lot of models, you're looking at, you know, four to six months some models it's more eight to ten months and really complicated models you know if you have adaptive steering if you have you know the full layout uh, fold out seats really anything that requires a ton of microchips well that's when your delays start to go up and we've seen that this year we've had even the option on an xlt 302 which has led lights in the front well you can get a credit for removing those LED lights. So you get your vehicle faster, it takes less microchips to build, so that's how you get your vehicle faster. And speaking of getting your vehicle faster, do remember that accessories, uh, I would definitely encourage when you're ordering, get the accessories that you can from your parts department. Do be warned uh, because of transport, you know, they're not coming, you know, basically for free on the vehicle. Uh, they've got separate added transport, so they're a little bit more expensive from the parts department than getting them from the factory. So just take that into account. Now for Maverick talk. So this is a bit of a public service announcement for the Maverick. This past winter, we saw people that had, you know, we saw a few people on the internet who remote started their hybrid that the catalytic converters really got really, really heated up. They got really quite red. So if you've had this problem, you just need to contact Ford. There is a solution. They will reprogram uh, the vehicle. And when you have a remote, when you remote start your vehicle, it will no longer heat up. Uh, so you won't have this, you know, piping red hot catalytic converter. So that is resolved. Now in other really positive news, Maki, -E. some Maki's, -E we've seen them on the forums. I've witnessed it with uh, people that I know, one person that I know who has a Maki. -E. Well, the windshield, when you're driving on the highway at highway speeds under very cold temperatures, there wasn't enough heat in the vehicle to really keep the windshield properly defrosted. Visibility was low. That is also fixed with a reprogram so the computer computing system the vehicle just needs to be reprogrammed and it's resolved so if you've had any issues call your Ford dealer they'll gladly take care of you now speaking of taking care of you uh, well I'll represent myself I'm Johnny from Johnny's car care and reviews me and the team here we want to help you we want to make sure that you know you're happy and you're well taken care of and you know the information you need to know so part of that today is talking about a bit of P more PSA. So PSA, if you have a Bronco, clean behind the fenders. If you go, you know, remove the fenders, the little clips that you turn down, you remove those fenders, get all that salt, calcium, sand, and mud between the paint and the plastic fender, because with a bit of wind, that is gonna rub, and it's gonna basically sand itself down. So please take care of that, and if you have an F-150, and you've received your F-150 recently. Well, for a while, Ford was giving, giving out this, you know, cabling system. And if you think you need that cabling system right now, the good news is there's new programming going on on the F-150s. So the cabling system is no longer uh, with the vehicles. If you try to buy that cabling system, it's going to be $1,200 versus about 80 to 100 dollars for you know depending whether you're in canada or the us it's about 100 dollars canadian so i'd imagine it's about 80 us dollars we're back to the stickers 
Uh, trucks weren't working with the stickers because of programming. Proper programming has been corrected. And I would assume, and this is an assumption, so anyone, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if your truck did not come with that wiring and you want to use your pro trailer backup assist, well, let's say you're one of the trucks that was supposed to have cabling and for whatever reason you didn't have that cabling with your vehicle, well, I'm thinking that your dealer can put in the new programming into the vehicle and you'll be able to uh, just run on the stickers which cost a whole lot less. But recent trucks that are coming from the last few months and for you know the months ahead of us, the years ahead of us, we'll be using those stickers. Less microchips, much less cost. Now, speaking of programming and you know public service announcements, Blue Cruise. If you want to have your vehicle, your Mach E, set up with Blue Cruise, well or F-150, do plan on potentially losing your vehicle for three days. It's an eight to 11 hour job. However, let's say you drive your Mach-E, your electric Mach-E to the dealership, and you show up at the dealership and now you have 40% battery or 20% battery because the dealer is you know, a ways away from you. Well, the dealer is gonna have to bring that battery up to 80% uh, or slightly above 80% to start doing all the downloads. And the, you know this whole process can take eight to 11 hours, plus the time they charge your vehicle. So, and then it can end up taking you know two to three days. It's about 15 updates. Uh, some of the updates while you're doing them, the system tells you, you know, open all the door, open the driver's door, close all the doors. So there's a bit of manual, th manual stuff to do as you do those updates. You can apparently do them from home, uh, which that might be easier to just do them from home when, you know, start Friday night, do an update, then come Saturday, do another update. Um, sometimes you start to get the update going and you have to start over. So don't plan on getting it all done within 15 minutes, that's for sure. So. That's what I've got to say for this week. You know, it's not a huge news week. Uh, I covered it's it's hu not huge in volume. It's huge in the actual news because it's really it is really exciting that Ford is testing out the the Tesla Model S, the highest version of it, the the Plaid. So now that's only been overtaken, I believe, in acceleration by uh, the top of the line Lucid. So correct me if I'm wrong there, because I'm just running off memory. But all that, all the really what matters in all this is that Ford is testing an extremely high performance vehicle, electric vehicle. And that means they're benchmarking. So it means they're very much considering having a competitor for it. So I really look forward to seeing what that's going to be. Are we talking about a Thunderbird? Are we talking about, you know, a, a you know, an expensive Lincoln? It could come in as a Lincoln or it could come in as an ultra performance Mustang, you know, ultra GT, whatever they decide to call it, but an actual vehicle format. So this is really cool. I look forward to keeping everyone updated on that. And the last PSA public service announcement of the evening, and I really, it's a don't be fooled. If you've ordered a Lightning, first of all, get, you know, get price, but when the dealer does call you to put in your, uh, build your vehicle, well, make sure you do get current pricing off the internet, promise to you. And the other thing, the big thing, I mentioned this in the live with Marie, I thought I'd be using the cottage because I thought the F-150 would just easily and naturally power my cottage, but you do need, it's about, you do need an extra, you know, um, electrical transferring system. So that system costs about 4,000 Canadian. So it's, it's, it's an extra cost, all premium bat all, all the premium batteries for the F-150 though, the, the extended range batteries on the Lightning do come with a home charger, a powerful home charger, and that is very generous on the part of Ford. It's quite powerful. It's not just the little mobile charger like we get with the Mach-E, but it is a very big, proper household charger but you do not have the capacity of just being able to plug into your house and transfer power from your truck to your house. You do need an extra electrical contraption for that, a power converter. So keep that in mind if you're shopping the Lightning, don't be fooled. And until next time, that wraps everything up. If you got questions, comments, or concerns, 
please put them in the comments section. If you want to help the channel out, answer people's questions in the comments section because I'm 95% a one man show uh, doing the editing, the research and you know the presentation of the material. Marie does come along and give me a hand when we do a little live together. Uh, there'll be an upcoming live. Let us know what night works for you. You know, do you prefer Friday nights? Do you prefer Saturday nights? Do you prefer Sunday afternoon? So we'll put out a poll and in the meantime, drop it in the comments section if you've made it this far. Please help us out. Drop a comment, say finisher, and if you do like our videos, please do like and subscribe. It helps feed a poodle. And if you share the material to people that you know and they watch, well, that helps get the word out and grow the channel. Thank you for all our supporters. Really appreciate you. Have a great weekend. Great week. Take care.